So which is the smaller number? Well, that's the question in this particular math problem. And let's suppose you encounter this problem on a math test or quiz. Could you get this thing right? Well, let's find out. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It says the following. One positive number is two more than another. The sum of their squares is 34. Find the smaller number. And obviously, this is a multiple choice uh, question. So A is negative 5. Uh, B, or uh, choice B, is negative 3. C is 0. D is 3. And E is 5. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, we are dealing with a uh, multiple choice question. Now, this makes a huge difference on math exams. So for uh, those of you that are math students, or you, uh, those of you that have to take some sort of exam, like the SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, of course, you know, uh, these are exams, either, you know, college entrance exams, placement exams. Uh, nevertheless, uh, even if you're not a student and you're an adult, maybe you're going for some sort of certification, when you see a multiple choice math problem, you want to use the answers to help you figure out uh, the problem. OK, so the objective here is to get the question right. All right. Not necessarily show off your algebra skills or math skills. I mean, that's great. But again, when you are taking a, uh, an exam, you got to remember that you're up against the clock and you have to consider time. So you just don't want to read this problem. And of course, you should always use the rule of three, which is reading any math word problem at least three times before you kind of get into it. But uh, once you read the problem, and you understand what's going on. You need to consider a strategy to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at something that's very obvious here, and hopefully most of you picked up on this. So it says one positive number. Okay, one positive number is two more than another. Uh, so we're talking about positive numbers. Now let's take a look at our answer, uh, answer choices here. We have negative five. Well, is that a positive number? No, so we can eliminate that as an option. How about B? Well, that's negative three, so we can eliminate that. How about C, this answer uh, choice zero? OK, so if we have two numbers and the smaller number is zero, how's that going to work? Well, zero squared, well, mm, we probably can eliminate this as well, right? Because we can kind of go through a process where we can kind of check these values. So really, uh, these are the two best options, OK, uh, three and five. Now, what you can do is simply say, all right, well, one positive number is two more than another. So if, let's say, uh, the choice, let's say you check five, because we know that the answer is three. Well, let's go ahead and check the correct answer first. So let's say, well, let's uh, suppose that it is three. OK, that is our correct answer. So that's the small number. The other number is two more than the small number. So that would be three plus two, which, of course, is five. So now we have three and five. So uh, hopefully the sum of the squares of these numbers is 34. Let's check that real quick. So 3 squared plus 5 squared. Is that 34? Well, this is looking pretty good. So 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 25 is indeed 34. So this is the correct answer. Now, you could start with 5, and you'll see that that's not right. So you want to always use the pro a process of elimination okay, to um, solve uh, math problems on exams. Now, let's suppose I was a uh, kind of like not such um, a friendly math teacher and I was kind of, you know, writing um, a math final exam or midterm or some sort of chapter test. I could be like this. I could be like, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take away these choices, okay? Now, this is an open-ended math question, and now this is a different ball game. okay? So here, you're definitely going to have to use algebra, all right? But uh, for those of you that figured this out, fantastic. And if you didn't figure this out, it's just a reminder that when you do have multiple-choice exams, you need to use the answers. This is a great 
uh, opportunity uh, for those of you that are taking or still have to take math test. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, figure this problem out. Of course, we know the correct answer is three. So I just showed you the easy way. Now we're going to take the long route to figure this out. Okay, and this is what you would you would have to do if you didn't have the, your multiple choice kind of options. All right, so what we're going to do here is uh, establish a variable. So let's let x equal the small number. Okay, so if x is the small number, and over here in the prom, uh, one positive number is two more than another, so the other number is two more than the small number. Okay, so that would be x plus two. So we'll call that the big number. Now, what we have is some variables here, x and uh, x plus two, these expressions, but really what we're looking to do here is solve for x, because if we can solve for x, well, we're going to answer the question, right? The question is, which is the smaller number? Okay, so what do we do? Well, we have a variable. We can't solve for a variable in algebra unless we build ourselves an equation, okay? And we're going to have to go back to the information in the problem to do that. All right, so what do we need? Well, we need this part of the problem. The sum of their squares is 34. Now, anytime you see the word is in a problem, that is the equal sign. So this is pretty straightforward. Hopefully most of you can be like, oh, I get this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. The sum of their squares, so if we square the small number and then add it to the square of the larger number, that's going to be equal to 34. And we have two variable expressions right here for the small number and larger number. So let's go ahead and build this equation right now. Okay, so here is the sum of the squares of these two numbers, and it is equal, the, uh, the sum is equal to 34. Okay, so we have x squared plus x plus 2 squared is equal to 34. All right, now at this point, we have a good amount of work to do because this is going to be a quadratic equation. Now, you know, kind of as I kind of indicated, you know, if you said, oh, you know, here is, I can, I can do this problem, you know, uh, this is kind of show our answer choices again. You got to be very careful especially for those of you that are really strong in math, you may not, you could be very good in math, but uh, there's a difference between being great at, let's say, solving algebra word problems and being a great test taker, right? So this is really important for those of you that are in some sort of uh, course. You got to use these choices. But of course, if there isn't, then, hey, we're going to have to uh, you know, approach this the long way. So doing this problem using an equation, kind of what we're doing here in a second, all this uh, algebra, that is not the correct approach when you have uh, your multiple choice options. That would just take too much time as you're going to see right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get into solving this quadratic equation. So we have x squared plus x plus two squared is equal to 34. All right, so here we go. So x squared is of course x squared x plus 2 squared is x plus 2 times x plus 2, and that's going to be equal to 34. Okay, so marching through this problem, we have x squared plus x plus 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 34. So right here, we need to multiply these two binomials, and we can use the FOIL method to do this. And FOIL uh, stands for first, outer, inner, last, but uh, basically... It's just a way that we multiply polynomials together. This is something that you absolutely need to understand. But uh, here we go. So uh, the first terms are these, okay? So x times x is x squared. Then, well, let's make go ahead and put this foil back up. So that's the first. The outer terms are these, okay? So x times two is two x, so that's our outer. Our inner is two times x, so that's two x. And then our last terms are two and two, which of course is four. All right, so we have x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. So what we need to do here is clean all this up by combining like terms. All right, so let's go and do that right now. And what we have is the following. Okay, so x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. And the way I'm showing this problem, you know, I'm breaking it down step by step. This is what you want to do because if you don't, if you try to skip steps, you're going to uh, significantly increase your probability of making an error. All right, so x squared plus x squared, that's 2x squared. 2x and 2x is 4x. And then, of course, we have a 4 equal to 34. All right, now we have this quadratic equation. So what we want to do is set it equal to 0. So we're going to subtract this 34 from both sides and move this over here. Okay, so when we do this, 
Again, I want to subtract 34 from both sides of the equation. So 4 plus a negative 34 is negative 30. All right. Now, at this point, if some of you are you know, a little bit uh, overwhelmed with this algebra, let me go ahead and make a recommendation right now. Check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 uh, courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on all these topics on my YouTube channel. All right, so here we go. We are down to 2x squared plus 4x minus 30 is equal to 0. Okay, so this was a decent amount of work. You know, think about it. Let's suppose this was a one-hour exam and there was 20, 30 questions. You know, you're already kind of a couple minutes into this problem. So we are not done yet. Okay, so uh, what do we do here? Well, we have a quadratic equation, and we need to figure out how to solve for x. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we finish this problem up. Now, I am not shy for asking for help. Okay, I'm like, hey, I need your help because I am trying to reach as many people as I possibly can to help them in mathematics. So it's like, you know, if I get your help, then I'm able to help someone else. But uh, YouTube just loves the fact if uh, people say, hey, you know what, I want to subscribe. It shows that you kind of, you know, don't mind uh, listening to me uh, jabber about mathematics, right? But, uh, you know, what I try to do on my YouTube channel is come up with creative Interesting problems. I definitely, uh, um, you know, my biggest thing is tr is to not try to sound like a you know monotone math teacher. Okay, when you're teaching in the classroom, you're kind of restricted on how you can teach. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of the reality of a lot of teachers. But for me, I can just teach in my own natural style, right? So there's no rules other than for me to try to uh, explain things in ways that uh, people like and understand. But I definitely need your help to continue to grow my channel. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's get back to this problem. So we have 2x squared plus 4x minus 30 is equal to 0. Now, hopefully, uh, most of you out there saw, oh, we have a 2 here, we have a 4 here, and we have a 30. You could factor out a 2, okay, which would be the greatest common factor uh, being 2, or effectively, you could divide everything by 2. So we want to simplify. We don't want to just work with these coefficients. We want to simplify this quadratic trinomial down into its simplest form. Okay, so when we do this, we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. All right, now at this uh, um, juncture in the problem, what we need to consider is what? Well, you don't want to uh, go into the quadratic formula. Okay, for those of you who are like, hey, I'm going to do the quadratic formula, don't do that. Okay, now you only do that if you have to do that. So here, we can't take the square root of both sides. So see if you can factor this thing. And luckily for us, this thing can be factored. All right, so x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0 factors um, as x minus 3 times x plus 5. Now, factoring is a big, big area in algebra that a lot of people struggle with. Let's take a quick, quick look at a uh, one of my favorite little math tricks, math hacks when it comes to factoring. Now, when you have a quadratic trinomial where the coefficient, the leading coefficient, is 1. Now, remember, this has to be in standard form, highest to lowest power. So when you have 1 in front of the uh, uh, squared term, like x squared, 1x squared. So if we had another number here, like, say, 4, we can't we can't really do what I'm going to show you. Okay, there is, it's, There's another procedure that's similar that's a little bit more involved. But when you have a 1x squared, 1y squared, well, this is super easy. Okay, so I like to kind of, I like to teach it this way. So you're going to take 1, just multiply by the last number that's negative 15, all right? Or you can just go to, to this last number. The reason why I'm doing this is because when you don't have a 1 here, you do the same thing. So just take that 1, multiply by negative 15. Obviously, you know it's negative 15. Now we're going to list the factors of negative 15. So just Start with 1, okay? So it's 1 to 15 and 1 to 15. So remember, uh, to get a negative 15, it's positive times a negative. So it could be negative 1 times 15 or positive 1 times negative 15. That gets us to negative 15. But we also have 3 and 5. So I always uh, write these in pairs. So negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and a positive 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. All right, so what's the whole purpose of this? Well, look at the sum of each of these factors. Now, you don't have to 
write all of this out when you get good at this little technique. So negative 1 and 15, this is a positive 14. This is a negative 14 when we add the factors up, 1 and negative 15. Here, uh, negative 3 and 5 is a positive 2, and then 3 plus negative 5 is a negative 2. Now, what's the whole point here? Well, we want to select the, um, the pairs of factors that add up to this middle number. What is that middle number? It's a positive 2, okay, positive 2. So it's this coefficient in front of x. So which one adds up to 2? This one right here, okay, negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Well, these are our factors because x squared, you're always going to have an x and x. So negative 3 will go here and a positive 5 will go right there. All right, now this is a great little procedure for those of you that struggle in factoring. And I am full of little math hacks and math trick tricks uh, to get you through your algebra class or whatever the case might be. But uh, you definitely need to know how to factor. All right, so x minus 3 times x plus 5 is equal to 0 is how this quadratic trinomial factors. Now let's go ahead and uh, set each factor equal to 0 because we have this thing times this thing is equal to 0. So one thing times another thing, and the answer is 0. Well, one or both is uh, equal, um, must be zero. So this is what we call the zero product property. So we set each of these factors equal to zero and solve for x. So x is equal to three here, and x is equal to negative five right here. Remember, the answer, the number is positive. Now, if we go back to the question, uh, it indicates it's positive. You can also just check uh, these values, right, by going back into our problem. So negative five cannot be the solution because it has to be positive. So x is equal to three. Now, this is a lot of work to invest on a uh, multiple choice test. And this is like a red flag for those of you that are taking or have to take math exams, okay? So you're you're almost the de the people that are designing these tests are like they're just like you know I, I don't want to say they're they're not bad people because I do it but you might you you might think they're, they're like oh these people are, are they're kind of out to get me well they kind of are out to get you okay because what they want to uh, see if you have the ability to think okay now what do I mean by that you have to go slow don't start rushing into a problem. Take your time. In other words, you invest a little bit of time to think about the problem. Now, if you uh, if you know you uh, analyze what's going on and you say, okay, I can do a quadratic equation here, and I got to go through all this work to get the right answer. I know I could do it that way. If you have your first incl inclination is you can solve this problem because you know how to do all of this stuff. Well, that's typically going to be the wrong uh, choice or wrong approach, okay? Because these um, tests are designed, or you know, to be done in, in a timely manner. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to do this on a test, but oftentimes there is another option, okay? So think about that. So, hey, can I use these answers? Is there another quicker approach? You know, and I would say more than 50% of the time there is, okay? So, again... When you see multiple choice on a math exam, it's a dead giveaway to stop and think before you invest a lot of time. Uh, but anyways, I can talk, talk, and talk about algebra and test taking, but here is the bottom line, okay? If you are a math student and you want to do well, you know, in your exams, your grade, of course, you know, uh, obviously you want to do well, the key thing is to learn the skills. Don't look for test taking strategies and be like, okay, uh, you know, I'm just going to look for secret ways to kind of pass my exams, not, you know, what trying to avoid actually learning the material. So the best thing you can always do is learn the math. OK, if you learn the math, you know, taking tests is going to be much, much easier. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.